welcome back to The Good Tea with me, Jojo Good Mojo. So we're about halfway done with The Real Housewives of Potomac Season 8, and I feel like this is a great time to just grade all the beefs that have been developing all season. So let's just get into it. First up, we have Jizzy and Candace. Alright, so this Giselle and Candace beef. I give it like a B, because technically it's the most technically it's the most interesting beef. However, Giselle's whole side of the beef to me is like not real like it's fraudulent um it all started last season when she 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 accused uh chris candace's husband of essentially like trying to get with her um and saying that like that whole like thing made her uncomfortable um and it's just i don't know like to me it's weird because like when she brought this to candace's attention candace was so caught off guard because one, she waited, like, until the cameras were brought back up to pick back up to, like, bring this up. But then also because, um, from Candace's perspective, her, Chris, and Giselle, like, they all had, like, a friendship. So, like, if there really was a situation where, like, Giselle really feels uncomfortable, why didn't, you know what I'm saying? Candace would have expected Giselle to, like, talk to her immediately, like, right after. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, like, odd that, like, they saw each other during, like, the off season and, um they have this friendship and Giselle just kind of like almost like held on to this information until there was like cameras up and she could get paid for talking about it and resolving this issue with her friend. So of course Candace is like not responsive at all to like the way that Giselle has brought this information to her and she instantly like goes into like protection mode because the story doesn't really make sense. Um, Everyone who hears the story and who, like, knows both people are kind of just like, all right, like, worst case scenario, this just sounds like a miscommunication of boundaries where Chris thought that it would be okay for him to, like, ask a friend to step to the side real quick to have a quick private conversation. But Giselle, apparently they aren't, from her perspective, they aren't that close and that made her feel very uncomfortable and, like, he was trying to, like, push up on her. Okay, fine, cool, whatever. And then in during the reunion, Candace read Giselle to filth. I and un- I understand why Giselle started off this season being upset with Candace because ooh, she told you about her yourself. Like she told you about herself yourself. Like the the if Giselle and Monique were in the same room, I would not expect for them to talk because Monique told Giselle about herself. You know, I understand why Giselle don't like Wendy because Wendy told her about herself too when it came to her and her pastor and her 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 her, her little boo thing, her little baby daddy her ex-husband so like i understand like people be reading giselle down and giselle don't got the quibby comebacks you know what i'm saying giselle's comebacks or giselle's get back are like plots it's it's it, it requires people and places and things like what she's doing between NECA and karen um so yeah like i don't know giselle's whole side of the beef kind of just feels weak and then Candace's side of the beef it totally makes sense um and she's valid. Like, she's totally valid. I find it odd that last season, Giselle's storyline was essentially that Chris either attempted to or kind of did, like, s aid her. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was trying to isolate her and, like, basically, like, preying on her. That's how she described it. And so this season, we kind of talk more about, like, the topic of you know, sexual assault. She, the way she's, like, showing up in these spaces is almost as if she has, like, nothing to do with it. Like, last season, she was very much giving, like, I am an advocate, I'm speaking up, and this season, she's very much giving, like, I have no idea. Like, I've just never experienced that before. Like, I need to listen. I need other people to talk to my daughter about this situation because she's going to college and they know more information than I do and da 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 And to me, it's, like, very odd. Like, the situation that Giselle described, I don't know if it actually happened, but the situation she described, I think that's a story that you should definitely tell your daughter. And I think that's a, that conversation would be nice to be recorded. Like, that's a story that everybody needs to hear. Like, um, if you're in a situation where, like, you're in a room alone with someone and for whatever reason you feel uncomfortable, just get out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what Giselle did... In that instance, you know, just getting out of a room where she felt uncomfortable, that was the right thing to do. And I feel like that's a message that should have gotten projected, but it wasn't. Giselle was on mute with that. So that's why I look at her issue. Like, I just look at Giselle's whole, like, side, like, a little, like, weird and funny because it's just, like, it, it seems like you created a conflict with Candace to try and hide the fact that, like, your best friend's husband is just living his best life and disrespecting his marriage um and to hide it you're gonna sit here and pretend like not pretend yes you're gonna sit here and pretend like uh 
Kenneth's husband was trying to push up on you. And then I totally think that you recruited Ashley because Ashley trying to pretend like Chris slid in her DMs and then coincidentally Ashley's like best friend that she was trying to bring on this show is also like he's also trying to get with her. Like it's just I don't know. Every time we could roll the tape back and kind of like look at the receipts. Chris, it never gave, like, oh, Chris was trying to get with you. Like, it never gave that. Um, and it's, like, I've never even heard the women, like, apologize for it. Like, Ashley, I think Ashley owes Chris an apology. And I so think de she definitely should apologize for her friend because her friend should have lied and said that Chris was looking at her and, like, checking her out. Chris wasn't even looking in her direction. Like, the fact that Ashley has just d just completely skipped over that, not addressed it, not said anything about that situation, I think it speaks a lot to her character. Um, and I understand why Candace and Ashley, like, will forever, not forever, but I understand why, like, Candace is not trying to be Ashley's friend because Ashley moves very, very weird. And she always fakes, like, she's, like, this very nice, sweet person. It's like, no, you're doing very nasty, malicious stuff. Like, you, I don't think you can be on reality TV for as long as you've been on and, like, truly be pure, pure hearted and, like, have these, like, great intentions. Um, especially the way you come at Candace is like crazy. It, you are jealous of Candace. That's very much what it gives. Um, moving on to the next beef. Wendy and NECA. So I give this beef, I give this beef a B. I, okay, I'm low key to, I, I love NECA. I'm a huge fan of NECA, but in this conflict, I'm definitely team Wendy because I completely understand Wendy's situation and I feel like I understand the whole conflict so I think it's all a rose because uh I think okay NECA I want to know how to pronounce her name because I feel like the way Giselle pronounces her name is so like different and I don't know if she's pronouncing it differently because that's the culturally correct way to say NECA's name or she's just she don't know how to say NECA's name but yeah, so I think the way that NECA got on the show was she moved to Potomac. I think she was very intentional about the zip code of the house that she moved into. Um, and I think she kind of shopped herself around saying that, like, oh, she knew Wendy. And that's, like, how she could be brought in on the show. Because I totally think NECA makes great TV. NECA should be on TV. I'm happy she's on TV. Um, but they have to make her presence make sense on TV. So I think she was saying like, oh, yes, I know Wendy. Me and Wendy, like, I, and Wendy's my connection. And I think Wendy found out and she was like, I don't know this girl. Like, no. And I think Wendy was like, actually, no, like, I don't want her on this show. Like, I don't want someone who I don't know claiming to know me to now be able to use this lie to be able to leverage a job and a platform. Like, no. You know what I'm saying? Like, I totally understand that. Especially if she's asking around about NECA and she's hearing stuff um i understand why wendy was like no i don't want you on the show so that whole narrative of like that they like uh what's giselle and ashley and robin try to like crack jokes like oh does wendy want to be the only nigerian on the show like no she just wants to like not have people on the show based off of her coattails like riding her coattails type stuff um, so I understand why Wendy does not like NECA, and I feel like because Wendy was not gonna, like, go like that and be like, oh, yeah, I'll just, like, be your in for the thing, they had to have Ashley bring her in, and so now the only way to make NECA's presence make sense is for NECA to have beef with Wendy, and so that's where we get this whole, like, shrine thing, like, I truly believe that either I, either it didn't happen, or NECA's blowing it out of proportion, like, I just, the, the, the storyline is ass, I, I don't know. I give the the conflict a B, but I give like NECA's storyline an E, an F. Like it's failing. It's not. It's no. And I wish she came on this show and she was like, I'm not picking sides. Like you know, I like Wendy. I like Giselle. I like everyone. Like I wish she came on that type of energy. Um, and then there would have been a natural conflict between Karen and. NECA because of the the whole zip code thing and because Giselle is there like she did not need I wish she did not have that beef with Wendy because it's stupid um all right Candace and Ashley's beef I'm team Candace I don't like Ashley I think Ashley's really weird I think it's weird because I remember they I don't hmm I feel like Ashley kind of throws rocks and high tans. I stopped being a fan of Ashley when that whole butter knife situation happened. Like, Ashley and Candace got into it at Ashley's house. I mean, no, Ashley and Candace got into it in Candace's house. 
Candace kicks Ashley out. Ashley leaves. Giselle goes, gets Ashley, tells Ashley to come back inside. Candace says, no, get out of my house. Ashley says, no. Candace flings a butter knife in Ashley's direction and Ashley acts shocked. And like, oh my God. But to me, it's like, girl, you're lucky we're not in Florida. Stand your ground law. Because Candace had every right to shoot you. To Like, to me, Ashley trespassed. Because Candace, who's the homeowner and who is occupying this property, told you to leave. You left. And then you came back without permission. And you were told to leave again, but you didn't. Like, you're trespassing. To me, Candace should have sued her. Um... And then, like, the way that Ashley tried to talk about the situation, like, when Monique was suing Candace or counter-suing Candace, um, and then Ashley described the situation, she made it sound like Candace was attacking her, when really Candace was defending herself and her property and, like, her land because someone was intruding and breaking into her property. Um, poor Candace. That, was, that must have been terrifying. Like, everyone just watching someone break into your house and, like, acting like it's fine. Um, next beef is Candace and Robin. Now, I get, okay, I'm team Candace again. Robin is trying to act like she's a victim. She is not. Well, she is, but she's a victim of Juan, not a victim of Candace. Um, and it's just like, I just, I'm not going to hold you. Like, I truly don't believe that Robin and Nia and now Kiarna, Kiarna, the new the new girl that uh, Candace and Wendy have brought in, like I don't think all three of them, I, and Neca, all four of them, all four of them do not need to be on this show. To me, Kiarna, she seems like a cute girl. She seems very calm, very chill, but she also got a little spice in her. To me, whatever element that Robin used to bring, Kiarna now brings, and then some. To me, she, in my opinion, she replaces and makes robin's role kind of null and void because robin is playing victim and then she's also a very bad actress like there was a moment in phoenix where robin and mia are like having a one-on-one -on -one moment and Mia's telling her about like what's going on in her life and it's very tragic and robin's like what no oh my god like the acting is horrible i just no i'm not a fan the last beef karen and mia now this beef gets to a plus because it's like, what is going on? I love it because it's kind of real. I know Mia knows some stuff because every time Mia spills Karen's tea or threatens to spill her tea, Karen is, like, really quick to kind of, like, forgive her and, like, be very calm and very nice and very cordial to her um, to essentially, like, shut her up. And so it's like, okay, so Mia knows some stuff. What does Mia know? 